Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about buying $9,600 of Magic Cards. This wasn't me, it was on a Reddit post. And how much money would you at most spend? So leave me a comment in the, in the comment section below about what was your biggest Magic purchase and what would be your biggest Magic purchase. So my biggest one is around $4,000, but I can't imagine spending $9,600, even if the whole concept was, I'm going to flip this collection and make more money, especially this particular collection where it's a lot of unopened booster boxes, which a lot of you, if you sell, if you're trying to sell an unopened booster box, it's actually quite difficult. It's not as easy to move as you would expect mainly because people who are buying unopened booster boxes are not buying them to open, so the condition of the box itself is very important. I've had people complain and ask for discounts and then or refunds because the box was damaged on transit, maybe a tiny little bump. And that's primarily people are buying boxes not necessarily to open, but to showcase, if you will, especially if a store makes the purchase of a box. Now, $9,600, wow, that's a lot of money. There are some video games. Um, he can definitely make back his money on this particular investment. I just don't see Magic as a long-term financially stable, uh, I guess, investment. Because when you look at an investment, $9,600 can buy a lot of stuff. It can even buy like a really kind of new car, maybe a Kia probably can buy like a Kia, right? And 9,600, if you put it into an, the stock market or the bond market as of right now, it's actually not that bad of a, a deal. I think the stock market is gonna go up a little bit and very soon. Uh, it'll go down before it goes up, but you can't always get the bottom. So when you spend that type of money on a hobby, it really is frightening to me. And I have made large purchases before, including a full 40 set of dual lands. And that was like a very big purchase. Um, and a lot of the times when you're making, when you're buying these huge lots, yes, there's margin on it, but there's tremendous risk involved in that collection because you're just I, the dude put $10,000 into Magic the Gathering. That's crazy, even for me, at one time. Yes, these boxes are unopened. Yes, they are very cool sets. But no, would I ever put that much money into a one-time purchase for Magic e cards, even if I did believe uh, that these cards would have value later on, or they would increase substantially in value just because of how liquid uh, one of the biggest talking, one of the biggest factors I look when I buy a collection is how liquid the collection is. How fast is it to move? If I can move a collection in one week, and I'm guaranteed that because I have lined up buyers, then fine, ninety, ten thousand dollars, that's okay. But if I'm sitting on the collection, as most of you guys know who play Magic, guys and gals know who play Magic, sometimes the collection just you have every intention to buy it and then sell it, but it, it sits in, at your home and there's very little you can do about it because it's like, that's just the nature of magic cards. Uh, they have, whenever you buy a diamond ring or necklace, as soon as you walk out, that nut necklace or ring or whatever that is, loses about 90% of its value. That's kind of the same way for magic cards because you're by definition, you're, the people who are willing to buy Magic cards are a very small subset of the, of the population. Someone willing to spend $10,000 on Magic cards, that's a tiny, tiny subset, a subsector of the market. So you're closing, you're making your asset, you're buying a non-liquid asset, and you're kind of enclosing yourself into a very limited market. So I would say, Magic the Gathering should never be treated as an investment. Yes, the numbers look pretty good, but they don't look good anymore. Legacies, Star City Games is not going to support it anymore, even less than they did in 2015. Uh, obviously, Wizard of the Coast has no interest in supporting Legacy. So all of these stories about, oh, I got dual lands for $50 or $10, and now it's like 200 
Yeah, that makes sense. If you got it at ten dollars, congrats, congratulations. But if you're going to buy it at two hundred and hope to make it as an investment, ugh, I you know I, I don't give too much financial direct financial advice. Just take a chart, take a look at the chart of Legacy Staples in the past six months, and let me know what you think because it's not great. Anyway, bye guys.